Hey guys, Kyle here, and today's video is just a quick update to the Game Boy Advance Power Switch Repair tutorial that I released last week. If you haven't seen it yet, I put a link to it in the description below, so go check it out. Anyways, I've gotten some questions about that video, so I wanted to briefly discuss those things and share some new information. Let's jump right in. First, I want to talk about my soldering technique. Putting solder down on the pads first is the easiest way that I've found to perform this repair with a soldering iron. However, some would argue that there's a better, more technically correct way. Check out this Game Boy Pocket motherboard I have here. I've removed the CPU because it originally had a couple of damaged pins on it. When getting the board ready to put the CPU back on, watch closely here what I do to the solder pads. After cleaning off the original solder first, I apply a liberal amount of flux to remove oxidation and encourage wetting. And then I put the chip back on and begin melting it into place with new solder. You can also see that I'm using a hot air soldering station for this, which could also help a great deal in the GBA power switch repair process. The reason I didn't originally use a hot air rework station is because 1. Everybody has a soldering iron, but not necessarily a hot air station. And 2. I literally just got this hot air station in a few days ago. That said, both are great tools, with their own strengths and uses. Moving on, next I want to talk about the power switch that I used in my video. If you search for Game Boy Advance Power Switch on eBay, nowadays you'd be lucky to find any results at all. This was a bit surprising to me, since these switches used to be available in abundance on eBay. The same search query on AliExpress returns at least a few results, but nowhere near as many as it used to. Right off the bat, you'll probably notice this switch, which looks fairly similar to the real one. Don't be fooled though, the pin spacing on this switch is a little awkward compared to the original. I believe that this style of switch is also a bit physically smaller than the original power switch. Reviews on these things are all over the map, so just stay away from them. The next thing you'll notice is a couple of auctions for these ones, which I can tell you are in fact the proper spec for the Game Boy Advance. However, that price is way steep. $14 to $16? Seriously? I bought these things for under $2 a piece a year ago. Check out my receipt here. I bought five of them for a little over $12, and that's including international shipping from China. Why in the world are they over seven times more expensive now? My best guess is because of the current worldwide health crisis, since these switches all come from China. FYI, I can't say it by name, otherwise YouTube will probably demonetize me. It's not like I make much money from my channel anyways, but still. Even so, because of the outbreak, production, as well as international distribution, have likely been greatly affected by this. I don't know with any bit of certainty what all this outbreak has affected over there, but what I do know is that there will likely be an end to all this chaos at some point. That said, for those of you needing a new GBA power switch anytime soon, the best thing I can tell you right now, unfortunately, is to wait. Unless if you want to spend $14 on one of these switches, which in that case, go for it. I personally believe that these things are not worth that high of a price, and they'll come back down near their original prices again sometime in the future. For now though, this is the reality we're in. With that, thanks again for watching everyone. Please like the video and subscribe for more content like this in the future. As always, you all stay awesome, and I'll see you in my next video.